saved a long time, but to see her step into something supernatural is a real blessing because she didn't actually think it was possible for her. She came from a church that said like, you know, the guys up here do the stuff and the guys out there just come to church. And now she knows that she is more than capable through the mighty works and the hand of God. And so it's really beautiful. And can you just stand up for me and just show off your beautiful sorry there. Spin around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There she is. You better recognize the powerhouse. There she is. Ann Wheeler. So she started testifying and opening services. And then I saw her confidence levels rising up. So that was really cool. We also spent time around a pool one time. She was, she was, uh, we were doing scripture uh, ping pong. And it was just really cool. So she would say something and I would look it up and then we read it together. So we got to spend a little bit of quality time, just her and I, around the pool on the, on the uh, couch. And we just were, were just loving, loving our opening day, getting prepared for the, uh, the very rigorous schedule we were about to walk into. At our first place, we were like, oh, this is nice. Well, that was it. <laughs> then, then the firestorm, right? A little sleep, getting late, four hours driving someplace to preach and, and do stuff for two or three hours, and then go back four hours driving. And it's not like a good sl two kilometers. Everything in India is two kilometers. You should learn that. Or two minutes away, which means like a few hours or a few hundred miles. You know, so it's, it was pretty funny. Um. So, I believe that today I wanted to just share about 15 minutes. Go. Look at you. You guys are pro team. See what I did there? There they go. All right. So, who wants to be used by God in this place? So, almost the majority. It's a, it is a majority. Um, and here's the thing. If you want to be used by God... It's actually much easier than ever, ever alluded to in my past, at least. Um, really just got to be hungry for that, which I saw lots of hands up, excited, ready. And the key is that God wants to partner with, with us to discover the kingdom of God that's already within you. It's already available to you. So God's stirring up some things in people's life. We don't always understand it. And sometimes that's the hardest part because our mind wants to understand everything before we step out. But the beautiful thing about it is God, once you start trusting in the Lord and leaning not on your own understanding, but in your, all your ways, you're acknowledging him, then he's going to make that path straight. Amen. A lot of times life just seems like you're just going and going and it's not, not, you're not really getting anywhere. God wants to straighten that path. He wants to get you accelerated on his course. And he wants to get, he ordered your steps already. But he wants to make a straight path for you. And he does that by letting go of our own understanding. Which I don't know if you guys are like me. But I have a problem with, I want to understand before I step out. But I think the more I got into the things of God, I started realizing most times I understand, I usually mess it up. The more I understand about a situation, the more I understand God out. Because God doesn't actually want me to help that much. More like yes and go and be there and open your mouth. I'm going to say something awesome. That's more God's way, which is really crazy because I'm like, I want to know what I'm supposed to say. Right? I want to know where I'm supposed to go. Go. I'm going to show you a place. Okay, God, that's cool. I like to know the place. Like, is it going to be hot? Should I pack shorts? Or should I pack a, a, you know, a, a full suit because it's Siberia? Like, where am I going? And sometimes we want to know all these things, but the reality is the journey is much more exciting when you just don't know. You don't know what you're going to say. And I'm about to read some stories with the disciples where God just says, go, and they go, and they experience supernatural things because they're going. Not because they knew all the things to say, not because they had everything prepared, but because he said go. Uh, and I think it was awesome that I got to use Ann Wheeler as my person, and apparently Joseph did too, which is quite the conundrum, but we're, we're going to figure that out. So, it's all right. I think God just loves you that much. When you love that much, when you love that much, then you know his eye is on the Ann Wheeler 
He is watching out. So let's go ahead and start by opening up to Hebrews 5. We were talking about the scripture Tuesday nights when we started like just stepping into some really cool supernatural things. And the kids started getting uh, touched by the spirit and, get, and uh, just, just uh, crying out to the Lord, physically crying and, and repenting to their parents. And it was just phenomenal uh, what God was doing. Um, and as we were doing that, I was like, when I got to India, for real, I was like, God, I need much more. Because, you know, there's such a demand on you when people are hungry around you. It's different, it's different in America because everybody's doing their own thing. In India, we were in places where the people came to us like we needed to have an answer. When, when, when a few hundred people are around you saying, give me the answer, you know, heal this disease, heal my crippled hands, heal my crippled feet, pray for me. That demand is heavy. We spoke 22 times in 10 days. 22 times. We went to that many places. We, you could say whatever you want, baby. You're my co-pastor. We're friends. Can I sit, can I come on, girl. Can I nope, you can come right up here, though. Oh, it's going to be good for you. You're just receiving your healing right now. Go ahead, receive it. Come on, receive it. <laughs> I, do, I, I, I do need to ask everyone to please pray for me. Um, if this doesn't go away, I'm going to go get it checked. You want to um, try this one? Okay, so I'm a little concerned. I don't. Uh, someone Focus. said maybe kidney stones. I've never had kidney stones in my life, so I don't want them. All right, I agree. You don't <laughs> need kidney <laughs> stones. <laughs> it's not a good day for kidney Everyone's stones. Everyone's freaking stuff to me. And it's not a good day for the kidney stones. Okay. Yes. So why I came up here, because um, I just wanted to really thank everyone that sewed into the missions trip. Like, Personally, I want to thank you. I, I almost want to just call you out and stand you up, but I don't want to embarrass people because I know people do things unto the Lord and before the Lord privately, and I, and I honor and respect that. But that's how, like, I want to honor you guys by just calling you out, but, but I will reserve from doing that because I know it is the right thing to do. Um, but one thing about my husband, when he goes on a missions trip, when he does anything for those that know him, he's full force. He doesn't play. It's not time for a vacation. It's time to see God's work be done. And, you know, I've heard different things about ministry trips. But nothing's right or nothing's wrong. I'm not saying that. To each group, they are called to do things the way they do that. But with him, I told people that were going, I said, you need to be ready because you're going to be nonstop with him. He doesn't sleep much. He doesn't rest much. He's going to keep going. And the whole team was in full unity. They were all, the, the strength of the Lord was on them. And they were all like, you know, 22 services in that amount of time. Can you imagine if, if, if we had 22 services in like two weeks? Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be amazing. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I'm game for it. You game for it? Let's do it, girl. <laughs> so, so, I mean, but that's a lot. I mean, just think about that in your head for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just, you know, I just want to really thank you guys that gave because there were so many people that, uh, without that, would it, we, we had 12 people go, and without that, th there would not have been 12 people going, y'all. So just thank you guys so much. What a sweetie. You can take that with you. So we were able to keep up with Ann Wheeler, and uh, she showed us how to keep rolling. So Hebrews 5, uh, this is a scripture we were talking a little bit about on Tuesday nights, and then we'll step into some some of the Gospels about some of the ways Jesus released people who wanted to be used by God. So all of you that had your hand raised or, or people that were thinking about raising your hand, once you see the rewards, you'll definitely want to, want to walk in the things of God. So here we go, Hebrews 5, chapter tw uh, verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partake, partakes only in milk is not accustomed or skilled in the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice or reason of use have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Now, 
Interestingly enough, when you go into a village and, you know, they're, they're not trained like us to receive from God. This place is like E-Z. Like when we, when we speak, you guys are, are super connected. You're pulling, like it, we could have a CD playing and you guys would just get wild. Like you're just pulling from God. You're hungry for God. And you could just sense it in the room, the way that, that the kingdom of God's being released. So because of all that, it makes all the, all the things that we have to do in ministry really, really easy. But in, in uh, India, some places we went, we went to a Baptist church. And, uh, and, and the people were sitting there. They were sitting in their seats clapping. And that was cool. But we missed worship. And I, if you don't know me that well... I don't just worship here. Like, I hate missing worship. And I was like, I was in somebody's house. He's a TV evangelist. He, you know, has crusades. He's talking about, let's have a crusade together. And da, da, da. And I'm like, that's cool. Can we go to worship now? Like, who cares, like, about any of this stuff? If worship's going on, what are we doing in your house? I don't want to pray for everybody. Don't want to take pictures together. I'm not interested in any of that because I, I hear worship's over there. Yeah, like y'all can be distracted. That's cool. But I, I hate, like I have anxiety attacks when I hear worship's going on and I'm not there. Like I'm like, oh my gosh. It's a, oh. I seriously do. That's a, that's a real thing. I don't know what it's called, but the struggle's real. You and me, girl. It's like, it's like as soon as I feel like worship's going on and I'm in, a, if I was in my office and somebody wanted to keep talking, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. You want to meet later? Right after this. That'd be great. All right. Yeah. You good? <sighs> then the panic attack rises because they want to keep talking. No, no, no. So I had to say it like three or four times. We get in there. As soon as I take off my shoes to enter the church, I walk into the church and they stop. In fact, it was worse. They had like this big like music. Like, look, they're coming in to the building. Wow. And we're like. Okay, that's cool. And we sit down and like everything stops and we're like, no. So I look at Edwin. I'm like, Edwin, this is your fault. I told you I wanted to have worship. He says, oh, you want worship? He goes over, speaks to the guy. They still want worship. The guy goes, okay, worship team, get back up there. I'm like, that was easy. So they did more worship. So we got off the platform and then Darnie starts breaking loose, getting in. Right in front of everybody that's sitting there clapping. Like if all y'all were sitting there clapping, Darnie starts twirling, starts being free. I, I just got off the platform to kind of start things, and everybody thought I should have a chair. I mean, literally, they're moving chairs over to me so I can sit in my new place. I'm like, oh, okay, we don't, I don't sit in worship, but, you know, plenty of people do. They have sitters, and they have standers. They have jumpers and leapers, people that lay on their face. There's all kinds of worship, but the main thing is that your heart's connected. A to the man. Come on. You have to connect. And I, I don't know, for some reason, when my butt sits, my brain disconnects. I get, especially if I get a good lean on, you know, then it's like I'm really disconnecting. So it's important that, that we connect with God during this times that it is to connect. Because it actually it opens up our hearts. It makes the mountains like plains. It brings the valleys up. It makes straight the path of God. God wants to take us to a place where we remove the encumbrances, the obstacles that are going to keep him from getting straight where he needs to get and do surgery. We want to humble ourselves before God. We want to get to a place where we can acknowledge him a place of repentance a place of need because if that doesn't happen then the whole time of even being here is in vain i mean i didn't come to impress anybody here Amen. i didn't come to like put on my best clothes so everybody could say oh good you're doing well i see you made it to church <laughs> that's cool somewhere but it's not cool in my heart so we just challenge you to really be able to connect with the Lord. So by reason of use literally means as you do the stuff, you'll find yourself strengthened by the Lord. In other words, you get sharpened by use. It's, it's a little bit the opposite of the world. In the wor world, you get more dull by using. But in, in the kingdom of God, the more you use it, the more strengthened it gets, the more it gets sharper. So a lot of times we don't know the things of God or how the Spirit's moving because 
we haven't begun to step into it. And it doesn't have to be that complicated. You know, pretty much everybody in here could give a prophecy that Jesus is Lord. I think, right? Are we all good with Jesus is Lord? How about Jesus loves you, brother? Jesus loves you, prophecy, brother. Amen. And you could got, find the right person that Jesus loves and find their heart just melt, begin to cry, and say, I was asking God before I killed myself if he even cared. See, it doesn't take a big prophecy. It takes a big God. It ta- doesn't take the most profound words. It takes the most profound one saying the words through you. Amen. And when you know who's talking for you, you don't have to worry about what you're saying. Amen. My son would say to me like, how do you get these words? I said, like, it's just because you think I'm saying something, but I'm not saying nothing. I'm just talking, and God is overshadowing. When you say something by the Spirit of the Lord, what happens is the words that you speak become life because the life giver infuses himself with your words. So as I speak, it's, not, it's no longer I who speak. It's no longer I who live. But it's Christ who lives on the inside of us. And because of that life, those words that I speak become life. And so I don't have to say mysterious things or deep things. I just say things and God says, yes, I'll bless that. So we get to find out who we are by stepping into that. Like the big Ann Wheeler testimony. Come on. She was my hero. I'm sorry. I'm going to brag on her a lot. You know, she's been hungry for years asking me, how, I just want God to use me. I just want God to use me. And now she knows that not only does God want to use her, but God is using her. And the one thing I could tell you about being in India is every time I prayed, I realized I want to pray more. Every time, like, I I can do the same thing here in in America as I was doing in India. So I'm going to read this last scripture, and then we're going to get into some testimonies. I'm going to read the short one. I have a Luke 10. If you're taking notes, you can read that later. The whole part of Luke 10 is actually talking about Jesus sending out 70. I'm going to read the part about Jesus sending out 12 um, for sake of time. So Jesus sent out 70 in Luke 10. Not just the disciples, but others. But in this one, I'm going to be reading about the 12 because it's a little bit shorter verse. Mark 6, verse 7. It says, he summoned the 12 and he began to send them out in pairs. And he gave them authority over all unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they should take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money, no in their belt. And but to wear sandals, he added, do not put on two tunics. And he said to them, wherever house you enter, Stay there until you leave town. Any place that does not receive you or listen to you, as you go from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet as a testimony against them. Then they went out and preached that men should repent. And, where, and they were casting out demons and were anointing oil, many sick people, and healing them. Now this is the disciples' experience. And this was our experience in India. Um, If I can get the team to come on up and join with me, we're going to share about about one minute a piece, a minute and a half a piece about basically the testimony of how the Lord, uh, we picked something that would connect with each one of you. Okay, so I pray that as we speak these testimonies that you'll really get to hear how the Lord used different people. This mic's not as loud, so let's use the red one. How about the curries? You love them curries? All right, since Anne's here, yeah, y- y'all can move the podium as they give a hand for Ann Wheeler. <laughs> Did you ever know that you're my hero? <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, you're just going to talk about what happened, at your testimony that you had. And then you just pass it on down. We'll just go through everybody here. And as you hear this, I want faith to stir. If you have someone in your life that you need saved, if you have something in your, in your life that needs healed, or you have a friend that needs healed, begin to receive. Uh, we're going to have an altar call right after this that you can come up and receive 
uh, healing from? <laughs> well, uh, I, I was just so blessed and amazed when I went there. The people were wonderful. Uh, I experienced the love that, and the hunger that they had for um, God. And the way they honored you, I, I, we, were, we should have been honoring them. And uh, the, um, the deliverances and the healings that were there, this one little boy, his hands was crippled and I uh, prayed for him and asked him to go like this. And I did that and he did it. And then I told him to go like this and he did it. And I asked him to raise his hands and he did it. So he was healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Darlene Curry. Um, okay, so two years ago, we got to go to India. Uh, the very first night that we were there, we were at a birthday party, and I had the distinct honor of finding out that a woman that I had prayed for two years ago named Ruth, who the doctors had destined to die of AIDS, um, that she is doing very well and healed and whole, still walking in the healing, which gave my heart just the most incredible great joy. Um, so very quickly, um, on this trip, um, just to be honest, I was really surprised. God kept bringing me, like, a lot of ears and deaf ears, deaf ears. <laughs> and, and he was healing them. <laughs> like, they couldn't hear, and, like, then they could. And I was like, God, this is so amazing to be able to partner with you that they couldn't hear, and now they can. And I said, God, I always want to hear you very well. So in all his fantastic, great wisdom and sense of humor, he decided that every time I was supposed to speak, I stayed up till the wee hours of the morning hearing what he had to say about the people that we were going to go visit. And at the one church, I came to find out that what I had spoken they had been praying for an entire year before we got there. So God is so good, huh? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. Um, if you want to know more about these stories, come Tuesday night. We'll have more time for questions and answers. Anyone interested in missions, again, I'm, I'm just repeating that. Because I have a lot of testimony here. But the one, one thing that really stood out for me, there was this guy came up. And uh, I was going out to pray for salvation for a couple of people that raised their hand. We had six, uh, six or seven in that service. They raised their hand for the first time receiving Jesus. And I was going out to pray for him. And this guy comes up, and he's got four guys around him, and they bring him up in front of me. And so, like, I don't speak their language, but he kept doing this in his stomach. His stomach was swollen out like this. And uh, I said, okay, I'll pray for you. Uh, and then somebody said, cancer. So... I started praying for him, praying for him, praying for him, and then I just said, okay, you're healed. And so I tried to back away, but God wouldn't let me back away. God said no. Uh, I couldn't let go of him. My, my hand was stuck to him. Both hands were stuck to him. So I continued to pray, and as I prayed, I felt his stomach just shrink. Right in, right in my hands, it shrank, and he fell down on the ground. And uh, that was awesome. So... Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Psalm 139, verse 4 says, Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. And uh, this sari that I'm wearing right now, it was a gift. Um, it was the very last day of the trip, and uh, I said, God, I really want a sari, but I don't think I can afford one. And uh, if I can, it'll be like the very cheap ones and... Uh, I won't have enough money to get any other jewelry or anything else. And I said, but Lord, you can make a way. You could give me a sari. You could make it cheap enough that I can get both things, the jewelry and the sari. Um, and we went to the final church, the very last one. And after we spoke and we finished, I went outside. And I met some girls my age. And I just started talking to them. And one of the girls starts looking at me and like analyzing my arms. I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> and she starts saying something, 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 sorry. And I got a translator. I said, what is she communicating with me? And the translator said, she, she has a sorry. She says, you're the same size as her. She wants to run to her house and get it for you. 
And so she did. She brought me this sari. And I said, Lord, whatever it looks like, I'm going to be so thankful. But the Lord in his goodness knows my favorite color and gave me my favorite color. And, and also, uh, the cool thing is we were, the girl that gave her the sari was in an orphanage. Yeah. So that's powerful. Good, Dar- Darnese. I are, uh, they also gave me a sari too, but my story is on deliverance. I don't know if Annie has that up there. You can see how crowded that place is there. We call that the hot box church. Um, I just started praying for these women. They were just lining up. And I started praying for these women. And um, the Lord showed me um, stuff that were in their heart. And there was so much abuse going on there, you know. So I started praying for their heart. And the Lord just showed me so much. And, and <laughs> we went, uh, it was like, it was just so awesome. I was praying for their heart, and as I was praying for their heart, Lord was showing me that um, there was so much uh, forgiveness that they needed. And mind you, I don't even, I didn't even have an interpreter, so I was just speaking in English, but, you know, the Lord worked on them, and these, this first woman got delivered. I raised her hand up, and, and I was saying, Jesus and freedom, and she went down. Next thing I know, all her friends were lined up, and there was like four deliverances right in a row. And God just used me in a mighty, mighty way. And it, I, just, I just thank you, Lord, for what you did. Amen. Praise God. Uh, this is the second time I had the privilege of going to India. But I just briefly wanted to say, if anybody wants to go on a missions trip, just step out and say, God, I want to go. Because it was a huge, huge miracle that my wife and I ended up on that missions trip. You have no idea how much the miracle. But then when we were in a meeting, I was actually praying with Michelle, and this lady came up, and it was in this church that they had a lot of faith. And sometimes when you pray for somebody, you can feel it almost bounce back, and you're like, this woman has a lot of faith. And so she said there was a problem with her eye and that she couldn't see and she had had an operation. So we prayed for her eye. And I only prayed once, and then I got her Bible out. And I asked if she could read it, and I had an interpreter, and he said, yes, she's healed. And I have to be honest, I was tempted to say, could you ask her again to make sure? That was too quick. Because her hunger was so fast, she just, boom, received a miracle. It was just like, wow, God, that was too quick. And then she goes, oh, by the way, I have an ear that's deaf. And I was like, oh, that's easy for God, let's do it again. So I prayed for her ear, went boom, boom. And I was just like, and she's like, smiles, and she's like, yay! And I was like, hold it, God, that was too easy. Forgive me, Lord. Again, check it. And she was totally healed. And it was like their faith and their hunger was so strong that it's just any faith or anything you had within you, they just pulled it out of you. And it was like, whoa, God, that was weird. But they just were so hungry to receive. And that's one of the things you notice on the mission field when you go, people that are so hungry and they're so grateful for for you coming to visit them and to share the word. And it was just a privilege to share that. Um, Okay, I am going to tell about a deliverance that I was privileged to be a part of and and witness. Um, We were at a crusade, an outdoor crusade one night, and... um, uh, during the prayer part, I just went and I was taking a break and I was sitting in a chair just watching the team and as the people get prayed for and the crowd kind of disperses and there were some people left and I, the Lord drew me to, I was looking at Pastor David and he was praying for this little boy and he had a demonic spirit that was manifesting. His face was twitching, you know, kind of like you'd see in a movie. I mean, really, you know, everything, it was just, Really, this kid and I was, it was like, whoa, this kid is possessed by a, de- by a demon. And the Holy Spirit, I was just watching David, and I was watching the kid, and, it, and it, I was moved by compassion because this is a little boy, like 9 or 10 years old. You know, kind of, I had a 9 or 10-year-old boy at one time, and I was like, whoa. And the Holy Spirit said, get up and go over there. So I did, and I went over, and, you know, we're laying our hands on him and just loving him and, and, you know, speaking to him. And um, then I saw in the spirit Jesus come over in his white robe and the demon came out of the boy and 
and his eyes all of a sudden, all of a sudden you could see him. David goes, did you see that? He can, all of a sudden he was just there again. And the demon was just gone. I was like, Look, I can't even believe this is happening. So it just, this kid was delivered um, from a demon. Yeah. So I had this little girl come up to me at a village and her hand was like, it was like withered shut. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm going to pray for her. And um, I prayed for like five minutes and nothing happened. I'm like, okay, I know that's not your will, God. I know you want her hand to open up. So I kept praying, and as you watch it, it starts to, like, move a little bit. And I'm like, all right, all right, that's awesome. So I kept praying for, like, ten more minutes. And I went like this to her, and she went like that. I was like, nah. And then I did it again, and she just did it, waved at me and walked away. I was like, and then I seen her when we got in the bus. I was like, and she was like, Is that I was her? like, no way. And then I waved at her, and then we left. And that's her, Sean, up in the picture? Sean, that's her up in the picture? Awesome. Praise God. Okay, so we went into one of the uh, churches. Uh, they were having it in. They had rented this big building. And um, when we went in there, I could just feel the excitement of everybody. And um, I, I was, I had to give my testimony. Well, when I got up there, I started to give my testimony and I couldn't <laughs> actually finish it because I got like so drunk. And um, I was just laughing so hard and it just, the joy was coming. And so, and um, then we were having, we had the praise and worship and um, the message. And afterwards, um, everybody was praying for people and joy was breaking out. It was like people were, they were piled up on top of the, uh, all the stage and um, everybody we were praying for, they were just falling out and laughing and it was just, it was awesome. <laughs> um, one of the things I got to experience, is I was praying for a woman's knee and I was, as I was praying for her knee, it was like cracking and breaking under, you know, being formed back and like I could feel it and hear it and it was just like, thank you, God, for your manifestation of this. And then afterwards, she was, like, hopping on it, and it was just great to see what God can do, you know, and the fact that I could even feel it was amazing. Amen. Um, so the testimony that I have is uh, our bus driver, whose name was Joe. Um, we got to witness to him. Um, when we first met him on the first uh, uh, day of the trip, um, his demeanor was very, you know, his countenance was very dark and just down and um, didn't know of the personal things that he may have been going through. And um, by, during the time that we were with him, we were with him, we would go on five-hour drives and four-hour drives. And like Pastor David joked earlier, everything was two kilometers, um, which means, you know, 50 hours at least. I'm joking. But um, it just, everything stretches in India. But... Um, Anyway, uh, we had a significant amount of time with this man uh, driving on the bus, and his, again, his countenance was a little dark when we first met him, but during that time, we took the word that uh, Chris Burns had given to us um, the day that we left, and he said to worship, the importance of worshiping together, and so we did that every time that we got on the bus and just began to just lift up our voices and sing, and Joe just started taking notice. Next thing we know, he went from taking notice to joining us in the services. Then he went from joining us in the services to lifting his hands. Then by the end of it, he asked, he said, I want to know more about Jesus. And um, on the last day of our trip, at the last service, he actually received Jesus, and we believe he's filled with the Holy Ghost. And God did extraordinary things. And if you can see in his uh, picture, he has a smile on his face for what the Lord did through him. Amen. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, Joe, Joe was Hindu. And, uh, you know, it was just awesome to see the transformation. He got closer and closer and closer. And so um, my, my testimony is that uh, there was a man that came to me. He came to a couple of us, but he was drunk. And you could smell him from about six to eight feet away, just fuming with alcohol. And uh, as he came to me, um, he said, I want to receive Jesus and I want to get rid of alcohol and cigarettes in my life. And I was like, that's awesome. So we start praying against the spirit of alcoholism and the spirit of, uh, spirit of nicotine and we're just breaking addiction, right? And then, then he says, uh, then, then the translator, I tried to get him to lead him to the Lord and I say, okay, 
he asked me to do it, and he would translate. So we led him to the Lord. He received Jesus, and at that time, he says, I have pain in my knee and all the way down to my foot. This pain is uh, really bad. So we prayed for his foot. I had a, uh, about an eight-year-old guy. And I had the pastor's son, which is about a teenager. And we prayed for his knee. He shook it like this. And he goes, no pain. And so I was like, yeah. And then he got concerned. He said, my wife's eye's hurting. So we laid hands on her eye. And her eye got healed. And then right when that happened, she looked at me and said, this is my husband that we prayed for in the afternoon. And when she said that, it like hit me. She was the woman crying because her husband was an alcoholic and abusive and he wasn't saved. And I just sat there and like the weight of God came on me just like right now. And I just stood there and I was like, God, you're restoring all things for this family. And it did so much for me. And we, I just gave God thanks. And, and then I hugged him and got a picture and I was really excited. So uh, there was a couple of us that were involved in that. And uh, it's just awesome what God wants to do. So if there's any souls that need saved in this place, any family members that need saved, that's how God grows the family of God. Because you know that there's a promise. All my house is to be saved. Upon your confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all our house should be saved. If there was, if there was healings that are needed, if there was a uh, favor that's needed or breakthrough financially, a couple of them said that deliverances, if you need delivered from something, um, we're going to give the opportunity to, to come up here in a second. I heard that you want to present something before we do our altar call. So let's do that really quick to, to just thank, give thanks to the children. Apparently they've been hard at work while we were gone. Use the red one. Yeah. Push it. Boop. There it is. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. So while you guys were away, actually a couple of weeks before you guys left, um, the Lord had placed it on our heart for the children to uh, um, do artwork and pictures for you guys to bless you guys um, when you guys came back. Um, we really miss y'all. So we came together with the children as the children's department. And um, each child has a picture individually for each one of y'all as the Lord led them. Just want to bless you guys with that. Come on up. Come on up here, guys. We want to see. <laughs> Let's see those beautiful pictures. Come on down here, too. Yay. Oh, a rainbow. That means the promise. And butterflies and ladybugs. All right. Turn this way so everybody could see. Come on down here. Let's show everybody your beautiful art. Hold that up real big. All right. Welcome. Yeah. That says, I am bad, and she put a big X on it. No more. That's awesome. This one. Oh, I need a, I need a new interpretation. All right. Yes. Yes, ma'am. something I implore you guys to look at them and see what God's speaking um, I was really impressed Billy looked right at that drawing and saw that in India they worship other gods and uh. he and the kids really we talked to them about what was going on and stuff like that and so it, it's really amazing actually if you read them yeah so. well thank you guys that's amazing can I look at that Whoa, that's fancy. Those are also so, so good. The essence were, was her saying that it was bad. It's not okay, yeah. No gods. worshiping other but gods. He has from God, Jesus came down. They're all worshiping. So. Wow. <laughs> all right. Can we give him one big, 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 big hand? Thank you, guys. What a great job. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, well, let's just put these right here as we get ready to pray. If you want an impartation or you just need a healing in your body of any sort, we want you to find a person that kind of connected you with something supernatural or something that you feel like the Lord wants to use you in. So we're just going to spread out across this whole area, and we just thank you, Lord. Um, Jeremy, you want to grab on the keys? If you want prayer at the end, you can, you can join us, whichever. So come on up. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Everybody on, in, the, in the room, stand to your feet as we get ready to bless you. 
Lord, we thank you for everything you're going to do and about to do. We thank you, Lord, for releasing your kingdom right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everything. We thank you for your love. We thank you for powerfully using these men and women of God. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. If anybody wants to be free from something in your life, there's some people that we're talking about deliverance. So let's get in here. Come on up. They're coming from everywhere. Just come on and just make a line as you see somebody open. We're just going to pray and release the kingdom right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, in Jesus' name, unlock. Unlock. I just feel like the Lord's unlocking the gifts of God in this place. God is unlocking the gift in this place. Step into the kingdom of God. He's unlocking. God's unlocking. Come on, God is releasing gifts of the Spirit right now, in Jesus' name. Unlock. Unlock right now, kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for unlocking the purposes and the plans of God in Jesus' name. Right now, thank you, Lord, mighty man of God, powerful elders, Lord, powerful men of God and women of God that release the kingdom right now. Thank you, Lord. Release your kingdom right now. your kingdom right now 
right now. <sighs> Never the same. Never the same. In the Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <sighs> right now. Right now. More joy. Unlock. 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 In Jesus' name. Unlock the kingdom of God right now. Yes, Lord. Right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. The Lord is opening doors. Yes, the Lord is opening doors. No man can shut. The Lord is opening doors. No man can shut. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. More. More, Lord. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. I'll tell you how to. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Release your kingdom. Release your kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Use us, Lord. Use us, God. Use your people, your sons, your daughters. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You release your kingdom, Lord. Right now. Right now. Hallelujah. Right now. In Jesus' name. Right now. In Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you for freedom, Lord. Thank you for freedom, Lord. Who? Oh, thank you for freedom, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shalom. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. More of your glory. More of your kingdom. More of your fire. More of your power. More of your glory. More of your kingdom. More of your fire. More of your power. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for releasing your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Can I get the drum mics on? There we go. Have your way, Lord. Move. Move, Lord. Move, Lord. Yes. Awaken. Awaken. Awaken the kingdom of God. Awaken the kingdom of God right now in Jesus' name. Awaken the kingdom of God right now. Come on, God's awakening. God's awakening. God's awakening. God's awakening. God's awakening. Stirring up the gift. Stirring up the gifts of God. Stirring up the power of God. Release, release, release. Step in. Step into the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Ooh. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Better? Let's check it out. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. Where you yes. go, oh, I'll go. What you say, I'll say, God. What you pray, I'll pray. Thank you, Lord. What you pray, I'll pray. Just release I'll your kingdom pray. right now in the name of Jesus. Just sing it out. Thank you, Father. Never the Where same. you go, I'll go. What you say, I'll say, God. What you pray, I'll pray. What you pray, I'll pray. One more time. 
what you say, I'll say, God, what you pray, I'll pray.
I'll say, God, what you pray, I'll pray. What you pray, I'll pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, for releasing your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, as we go, Lord, we're going to see great and mighty things. Thank you, Lord, for releasing our families, salvation of the Lord. All our family members shall be saved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.